I made all of these jelly prints as presents for Easter. This really was a productive project. While I am explaining how I made them, I'll also give you quite a few tips and tricks about how to print with etching inks and when to use acrylic paint instead. Hello jelly fans! Today I'm going to print some stuff for Easter, as I promised, with the jelly plate. And what I need today is the jelly plate itself, which I still have to clean. And I'm going to do that for you, that you see it, because people keep asking me how to clean the ink off. Uh, I'm going to print on Fabiano sketch paper today, which has only 930 grams. Um, uh, not grams, GSM, and um, if you want to paint on it later, I would recommend to use a watercolor or a printing paper that has at least 200 GSM. Um, I'm going to employ these copies of an old photo I have. Uh, I made some laser copies and see what, uh, I don't know if the contrast is good enough, but we'll see. And I'm going to print a nest, of course. Um, I also have some weeds and I'm probably going to make it into a nest, I don't know, maybe the small one is enough, but it's a little small, so we'll see that. And uh, small and large feathers, coffee, and a Savoy cabbage, as I promised, I'm going to use for the background. Um, I'll also use some of these cardboard packaging, which I always love. And uh, yeah, we'll see to that. Uh, maybe I'll even try to print this bark along with the nest. Um, I'm not really sure if it shows on the print. I've tried wood before and it's not so convincing. And uh, of course you need uh, regular kitchen tissues. Um, and you need some baby wipes. And I'm going to use... Uh, um, gloves today uh, because I'm going to print with the etching ink. The etching ink is the Kua ink. Um, I'm probably, probably going to use some colors too. I don't have the, uh, the yellow and, uh, and I have a phthalo blue and a medium red cut red medium hue um, I'm gonna mix those right on my plexi sheet which is still dirty from last time but it doesn't matter okay let's get to it I am cleaning the jelly plate with linseed oil you can use any vegetable oil oil is best for all etching inks even for the soy based akua the akua you can wash up with soap or dish detergent but I find that the oil works better and faster. The paint you still see here is on the other side. Starting with the red Akua, I have spread it out on some plexiglass. You can use real glass as well. Then you pick it up with a brayer and then roll it out evenly on the gel plate. This takes quite a bit longer with the etching ink to get it even than with the regular acrylics. Note that I'm taking off some color on the left side as I want it lighter there. Then I'm coming in with a cooking tool with a silicone head. It works very well to make some marks and it doesn't have a sh any sharp edges so it won't scratch the gel plate. This is a package of my favorite sin. I recently noticed it has quite some reliefs in it like the brand and these little flower bands. I am pressing down the inner side which is cardboard. And just look how the flower pattern is also showing on the inner side and left this beautiful flower band. That is so lovely. Now taking the print with a 90 GSM paper. Nice. I can see the nest setting on top of these landscapey structures and the birds singing these flowers. But first the next print. 
rolling out thin layers of the Akua Ptalo Blue and the Akua Cad Red. As they are mixing on the plate, I get a little bit of purple thereby. Placing the small nest on the plate. Now this is the most important tip I have for you here. I am taking off the excess color, not with a copy paper or the like, but with a deli paper. This paper, together with the etching ink, produces the very interesting blobs and halos around the object. Here is an example of a feather print that I created like this. You cannot achieve this with regular acrylics, or at least I couldn't. You can see that again later in this video in another print as well, which therefore became my favorite. I am messing a bit with the feathers so that they look more interesting. This is a rooster's feather and really long. I am printing it negatively like you would with a stencil and therefore only get the silhouette of it. But I'm using the feather itself to print positively on my paper. It is faint but it has a nice effect. Yeah, I like it, but there's something missing. The eggs. I'm drawing and cutting out some egg shapes from another food package. Now rolling out some of the black Akua for this. I am placing the eggs where I want the nest roughly. Then placing the nest and pressing it down firmly to also get the finest opening in the straw. In this case, not with a paper, but with my gloved fingers. Always a mess to get the straw off here. I'm also employing the, the natural stuff that I have from my garden to give it a, some kind of a firm underground, if you know what I mean, and then placing some feathers on. Here I am trying a double print. You probably know the routine. You take off excess color on one side, keep the paper firmly in place as you remove the just printed objects, then press down again and pick up the imprint it has left on the gel plate. And then repeat this on the left side. A very dark but deep print is the result. I'll show you the working out of this one towards the end of this video. I want to combine black and blue, mix them a little directly on the gel plate, but not too much so I get color variation in some areas. And sorry, the camera went off without me noticing. I printed the nest and the eggs and feathers, again picking up off excess with the deli paper. Here you can already see on the gel plate how interesting this turned out. And I don't know why exactly I love these effects so much. I guess it is because it triggers my imagination to work it out more and thereby also creating an image of how my mind works somehow. Ooh, that's kind of philosophical. I guess the paint has gone to my head already. Just stick to the process, woman. I'll show you, pretty sped up, the working out of this one before I make the next print. This is the blobby ink print technique, as I call it now. Colored pencils and micron fine liners will do this. There's just nothing better for feathers than this micron pen size 005. These halos I am enhancing with a white pencil. Of course you can say I don't need to use this technique with the messy etching inks. I can just invent something like those halos. And you can do that of course. But for me it just creates something magic. And I can't let go of this technique at all.
I then decided to employ a chalk pen that I recently bought and it makes those lighter areas just fine. For the structure of the eggs, I am just following what the paint gave me, meaning I don't cross hatch in a round direction to show it's a round egg. I just take over the straight lines and just enhance them a little bit. And I like that. So this is the blobby, bludgy, blodgy end version. Now I want to start working with a photo and do a laser transfer. I copied this on my black and white laser printer. My most important advice here is don't use the edging inks for this, as you see me do here. The transfers usually work with them also, but you'll see that this time it didn't. So the acrylics are much more reliable with this technique. The feathers printed nicely though, so I just have to repeat the photo print of the birds. So, second try for the birdie photo. I am using the golden open slow drying acrylic paint here, as they don't dry very fast, as the name says, so I have some time to manipulate the gel plate before I print. Another tip, clean the rest of the plate surface while you leave the photo on the plate, so you don't have to clean in little corners extra carefully. And yet another really great tip, Put the gel plate on a stiffer piece of plexiglass. It holds the plate straight while you put on the plate on top of the paper, placing it carefully where you want it. And that's the result. I like it a lot and I'm doing some more work on it, but not too much. For the work on the feathers, I use the same micron pen, uh, also 005 size, but in blue. I always find it very interesting how the feathers look if you work on them closer. You can see variations in parts of the feather. I think it's actually two layers of hairs in a feather, but you probably cannot say hairs. I am only working out some areas that need a little more detail, most important the birdie heads and the eyes. I kind of like the artificial look of this print, with the rims on the feathers and also rims around the birdie heads which were from the previous print on the same paper. Unfortunately one of the little chicks is gone here and I don't want to correct that. That would be overworking. And I like the imperfection of this one a lot. So I have more, two more prints that need a little further printing, so let's go for that. For the red one, I actually cut out the original of the photo after scanning the page to keep it. This is a 60s magazine page and I know it prints because I've tried the old magazines in a few other videos before. But again, I do the transfer with a black acrylic color. I suddenly noticed in the original that there has been a fourth birdie all along. Oh my god, I hope it got some food and was not being trampled down by its siblings. I'm gonna place this one on the landscape marks I made, like it is sitting there. Mom was not clever enough to build a nest in a tree. Or was it daddy?
Oh my, you can already see here that this original print is quite gorgeous. I really am carefully that I placed the next nest exactly right there and it worked. See how they sing flowers? Very few pencil marks are necessary here, mainly to fit the nest onto the wavy wave. But I'll also take care of the fourth chick, uh, duckling, whatever, here. Some more attention to the eyes. Some shadows for the flowers. And some black shadows on the uh, outer rims of the package. Um, but only on the shadow side. The light comes from above left. As usual in my paintings. The usual blobs and dots waiting for shadows. Not exactly easy to find out the outlines of the fourth bird. So I have to give some highlights to the beak of the bird. And I'm using a fabric pen, a, a felt pen. And it actually works quite well. It's easy to handle because you can wipe it away if you're quick. And um, it's not too strong like the Posca pen. So, if that is not cute, I don't know what is. Still have to add some feathers and eggs to the blue and red print. I have decided to speed that up even more for the sake of the length of this video. For anybody who doesn't like it that fast, you can also uh, slow it down in the settings of the video. I am printing the feathers and the eggs directly onto the print. That didn't work really well. I haven't taken enough paint. So I'm printing the leftovers on the jelly plate directly also. using a little more paint to repeat the feathers and egg prints. That reminds me of another thing I want to recommend. Don't make the etching ink layers too thick or it will take the etching ink forever to dry on your papers and you can't go on with the pencils right away. Nice, but it needs a little more contrast in the nest itself and an outline for the eggs. This will go to my best friend. It has exactly the colors she loves. Now for the last one, the dark and scary one. But it will sort of glow in the dark after this. Working on the feather with a pencil 
But I'll even put more micron pen on top. I'm leaving the white spots under the eggs. They contrast with the surrounding and therefore make them the center of attention in this piece. I'm using a fine liner around the objects, I'm filling in the detailed openings um, because I'm coming in with a brush later to make the whole background black. So I'm coming in with a um, drawing ink and a brush. I like the ink because even though it's only a 90 GSM paper, it doesn't buckle the paper, uh, or at least not so much. And so that works better than watercolor, for example. And I like it because it has a very matte finish, which I really like. I don't know what these bright spots are, maybe some eggs of way smaller animals or food for the chicks when they hatch, but I have a quite a disgusting idea what they are. Come on, this is nature. So, I made five nice Easter presents, I think. Sorry for flattering myself, but I'm really satisfied with these. I hope you find this inspirational to do something like this yourself. Ask me anything in the comments below. I love the communication. See you next week. Bye.